I've done past videos about creating Lazarus kits. And in some of the comments and some of the videos, people have asked specifically, well, how good is a Lazarus kit? So today I want to show you using some of the Lazarus kits that I've made compared to actual data. So to answer the question, how good is a Lazarus kit? We need to start with some criteria. Well, the first criteria that I want to use is comparing the match list. Basically a perfect kit would have the same matches compared to an actual person. Now I've created the best possible Lazarus kit for my grandfather, but I also happen to have my grandfather's DNA so that way I can actually compare how good the Lazarus kit is to him. Now you saw in a past video when I compared their one-to-one -one, that it wasn't green as in a full match anywhere, but it did have a half match almost everywhere on all of the chromosomes. Now again, this is the best possible Lazarus kit that you can make. So let's go over some of the results when I compared the matches. First off, matches from the real kit, but doesn't match the Lazarus. So in other words, these are the percentage of matches you would find on the Lazarus kit compared to the, to the real kit. And initially it doesn't look that good. In other words, if we're looking at all matches, you're only finding about a little over a quarter of them on the Lazarus kit. But there is some good information to see. If we're looking at matches above 100 centimorgans, the Lazarus kit actually finds about 93% of them. So that's very positive. Kits more than 50 centimorgans, it still finds about 75% of all of those kits. It's only when we go less than 50 centimorgans that we get to, I would say, bad numbers. So above 25 centimorgans, it only finds 31% of those kits. Now, again, that also encompasses everything above 50 and everything above 100 as well. And so you can see that the lower down in centimorgans you go, the less of those kits it's going to find. And you're gonna be missing out on a significant number of those matches. But let's look at the flip side. So in other words, let's find matches for the Lazarus kit that don't match the real kit. In other words, these have to be false matches because they don't match the real kit at all. And this is actually really good news for the Lazarus kit. What I found was there was only a 2.5% of those Lazarus kits matches that did not match the real kit. In other words, this is an extremely low false positive rate. I would say one thing with these numbers, this is based on the best possible Lazarus kit. In other words, I had five children plus a grandchild from this. I had data to be able to phase all of these. And so I got as close to a perfect Lazarus kit as you could get, which you can see here is still only, you know, one quarter of all the matches. If you don't have that good of a Lazarus kit, you can expect these numbers to be much much lower, maybe half as much, maybe less than that. The false positive rate, if you have not as good of a Lazarus kit, I would expect to be higher, possibly much higher, but the good news here is because this rate is so low for a near perfect kit, if this was five times or even 10 times higher, while that is a significant number of false matches in that Lazarus list, it's not an overwhelming amount of those. So Lazarus kits are good at not creating more false matches, but they're not so good at gathering in all of the matches. That was criteria one. Let's go on to criteria two. Besides the matches itself, we also want to look at the amount of centimorgans with those matches. Ideally, if you had the real kit, and the Lazarus kit with a match, they would share the same amount of centimorgans. But because the Lazarus kit is missing some information, I wouldn't actually expect them to share that same amount of information. Simply put, if we take the amount of real centimorgans and subtract the amount of Lazarus centimorgans, 
then we're going to get the amount of difference and we can also see what the percentage is from that. So here's what I came up with. For the maximum amount of centimorgan distance, it's actually pretty large for some of these close relatives, which I'll show you in a second, 1,000 centimorgan difference. In other words, the Lazarus kit was missing 1,000 centimorgans for one of these matches. On the minimum side, this was actually a surprise to me. I did not expect any of the Lazarus matches to have more centimorgans than the real kit. In actuality, there was a handful. Now, it wasn't much in most cases. The most that you saw was about 20 centimorgans difference of the Lazarus having more. On average, there was about 58 centimorgans difference, but this was mainly from these closer matches that had a lot of difference, as you can see. When we look at the percentage of difference, the average was about 27%, so just over a quarter. So if you had a match that had, let's say, 400 centimorgans, you could expect, on average, the Lazarus kit's only going to show 300 centimorgans for that. The most, the maximum, was actually 80% difference. In other words, it took off a huge chunk of the overall. And the minimum was actually 31%, and that a negative 31%, which means there was a match that had a third more DNA in the Lazarus kit than was showing in the real kit. So while this is really pushed towards ha Lazarus having less centimorgans than a regular kit, you should actually expect to find a handful of matches that do have more centimorgans than the real kit, which again is obviously an error, but we know that the Lazarus kit is not gonna be perfect. Now, overall, there was also a lot of kits that had within one or two percent of where we were expecting it to be and even within five percent while many of the lazarus kits fall outside of that not all of them do a lot of those kits still have very close to what a real kit would be showing now criteria three i call this oddball things because they were odd it's not what i would be expecting Let's look at examples of this. First off, I have several kits on GEDmatch from different testing companies and some of them are combined kits as well. The range that my kits share with the real kit for my grandfather is between 1763 and 1788. It's actually a pretty narrow range um, because there's just some slight differences between each one of those kits from what those companies actually analyze as far as SNPs. But when I look at my Lazarus kit, not my Lazarus kit, when I look at my kit compared to my grandfather's Lazarus kit, the range is between 755 and 1032. So a couple of things that I notice with this. One, this is a much bigger range. There's about 250 to 300 centimorgan range as opposed to that 20 centimorgan range uh, that we saw with the real kits. The other thing is... All of these kits, compared to the Lazarus, fall outside of what that actual relationship range is. So I am his grandson, and if you look at the Shared CM Project grandchildren, you would expect around 1,300 to 2,200. This wasn't even close as far as a Lazarus. I was showing as something that might be more of a first cousin or great-grandchild. The next oddball was comparing the son of my grandfather, one of the sons of my grandfather, to the Lazarus of my grandfather. And what you can see here is that the Lazarus actually had 20 centimorgans more, even though there's just you know one kit here that's being compared. So the son kit is the same both times. The only difference is, is the real kit versus the Lazarus kit. The Lazarus kit actually came up with slightly more centimorgans than the son kit. Now, in this case, it's different in that it didn't obviously change the predicted relationship from my kits, but it was a result I was not expecting. So let's look at our next example. Here we have a match named Ivy, and versus the real kit, she shares 93 centimorgans with my grandfather. On the Lazarus, that's actually cut in half. She only shares 46 centimorgans. 
Now you might think, okay, yeah, that is you know quite a bit, uh, but that's not the oddball thing of it. What the oddball thing is is her dad. Remember, now she inherited all of or half of her DNA from her dad. Basically, all of the match that she has with my grandfather, she should have gotten from her dad. And I've actually checked this with other uh, matches on my mom's side to make sure that she's not related on my mom's side. She's not. Well, her dad shares 170 centimorgans with my grandfather, but on Lazarus, he doesn't show up at all. In other words, that 170 centimorgans on the Lazarus kit has just disappeared even though his daughter shares 46 centimorgans. That's something that I might delve into even more. But I thought that was really odd that we have the father sharing nothing that the daughter shared. Next one I want to highlight here is John. Now John was actually used to, with my grandfather's DNA to identify that our family name was actually Garnett that had been changed to Lee. He is a second cousin of my grandfather, and they share 232 centimorgans, which is right smack in the middle of where you would expect second cousins to share. But when we look at the Lazarus kit, John only shares 46 centimorgans with my grandfather's Lazarus kit. And that is below where we would expect a second cousin to be. So with this, I would like to say one thing that is important whenever you're using Lazarus kits is you shouldn't use the centimorgans from Lazarus for relationship predictions. There is too much of a range that they're showing in all of these matches and there's plenty of matches that are half or even less as far as the amount of centimorgans which can take them outside of what their actual range is. So if, for instance, with John, if we had just been using a Lazarus kit, then we might think that this person is an extra generation or two generations or three generations beyond where he actually was. He might have, instead of being a second cousin, we might have thought he was a third, fourth, or fifth cousin, and we might not have actually found that connection. So... Be really wary of using the Lazarus information for relationship prediction. And in conclusion, I want to say, you know, Lazarus kits are not very good. But they are better than nothing, which is what we're starting with. And so I'm not ever going to discourage somebody from using a Lazarus kit. What I do want people to realize is the limitations of their Lazarus kit and the fact that Lazarus kits are missing a lot of information, so you're not going to have all of that match data that you would have with the real kit. But when there is no real kit to have, a Lazarus kit might be your best bet. So try to make as good of a Lazarus kit as you can. Now, if you'd like to watch how to make a Lazarus kit, you can watch this video up here. Or if you want to learn something else, then check out the video down below.